Alright boys and girls, we're just going to create something really quick and simple today. Again, we're going to be using the Bifrost Graph Editor. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So I've got a little model of the uh, world in here. Um, as you can see, it's not flat, um, contrary to popular belief of some people. Um, but then again, not that this is uh, <coughs> absolute proof that the world isn't flat, but you know. I'm fairly normal and this looks to me to be correct right so we've got a sphere and um, I'm just gonna switch it off and I'm gonna go create new graph input output uh, let's pull out and I'm gonna drag in my aptly named uh, planet okay so we're going to create some strands. So really simply, we're just going to go and start typing create by hitting the tab key. Um, I'm just going to go underscore strands. And I'm going to create them along the normals of the model. Um, hopefully all of you that are watching this understand what normals are. Where do you go, buddy? Um, but if you don't, it's just basically the way that each uh, planar surface has a directional value to it. That's the normal. Um, so that's, you know, if a light hits the surface and you get like a specular return to the camera when you're rendering, that's because of all the different uh, planar surfaces that make up your geometry have got a direction in which they face. So when they turn and hit the light, it bounces off the planar surface, uh, the normal, and that's what gives you your information back. Anyway, um, let's just uh, take this mesh into geometry. I'm going to, should I do it now? Yeah, I'm going to create uh, an assign material node first. And I'm going to pop that down there. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more screen space. I've got three screens I could do an extra five, to be honest. Um, assign material, I'm just going to open up the Epishade. And I'm going to drag in a standard Arnold surface, and I'm just going to stick that into the surface there. Um, one finding is the the best sort of working practice for me is to not just keep dragging everything into the output as I go, um, because everything has to be built when you put it into the output. So any changes along the line, the further down the line. Um, it just has to keep updating in the output and it's uh, it's what sort of slows things down so we might as well compile that output at the end when we've put everything together so that we're not getting any kind of lag in the viewport um, this is of course going to become faster as more releases come out but um, it's just a good working practice especially when you're working uh, with dynamics, NPM, that kind of thing um, you might as well just unplug your output do all of your node, uh, change all the different attributes on your nodes, and then recompile when you stick it into there, rather than sort of sitting here waiting, thinking that it's being all laggy every time you change value. It's just a, a decent working method. There we go. Um, so we can do a set strands shape underscore strands, set strands shape, and I'm going to drag the strands into there. And finally, I want to have a set Arnold. Set Arnold uh, strand settings. Pchow. Right, drag that into there, and the strand's going to out into the geometry. So, everything's set here. All we have to do is plunk that bad boy in there, and we are good to go. Let it compile. Be right, so we've got strands going on. So, basically, these are. Um, Basically taking point positions of uh, different vertices, I think it is, or is it faces? Probably, no, it's normals, isn't it? Um, normal position, and it's pointing a strand out in that normal position. Um, so if we go to the strands along the normals node, we can add length to that. So I can make these smaller, 0.1. Then we've got small strands, um, or we could go up to like 20 just be crazy um, and then we've got loads of strands going all over the shop so we're gonna go over like let's go over four for now just so we can see everything four even still looks too big actually I'm gonna go over 0 0.8 that's how I roll okay um, 
We've also got a set strand shape, so we can change that from ribbon to thick tube, wire, whatever. But if we just get Arnold rendering um, right now, let's just get um, the Arnold viewport happening. Where is my Arnold viewport? Oh, come on, Maya. Don't crash on me. Not now. Come on, Maya. Come on, DA. Oh, we're still not there yet. Right, okay, quick, back to the viewport. The viewport. Back to viewport, and I'm just going to save this. <laughs> right, so, renderer, Arnold, thank you very much. Press the play button, and if you will start to see something in the window. Come on, Arnold. Right, there we go. I'm just going to unselect this area. So, here we've got, like, loads of these weird kind of rectangles pointed out. Now this may be a look that you're looking for. Um, I doubt it, but it's something different. It's something, if I said to you before this came along, if I said to you, could you do this in Maya please? I want to create um, a circular um, nest of uh, <laughs> rectangles and everywhere you point the camera, I want that circular nest to stay. You say, go away my guy. But can you do it? But here you can. So anyway, um, I digress. Back to the strands shape. Let's change it from a ribbon to a wire. Let's just try a few things. No, why not? Let's just go tube. Tubes, look at that. Now we've got like a blobby surface going on. Um, and we can take the default size down. Don't think that's gonna make a difference actually. It's just the default size. So let's move on from there. Um, and we go into the um, set on all strand settings um, and in the mode override we can change it here as well so I can go to thick um, and then if we go back to where where are we at where are we at? I'm trying to find the size again default size let me just change that there we go it does do something I was thinking about the wrong node so yeah we can take the default size down on the set strands shape and we can take this down as small as we like. I'm going to go down to two. Now we've got pointy, picky pin things sticking out of us. Um, uh, again, something you could probably achieve with mesh um, pretty quickly. But uh, um, this is non destructible and we can do a hell of a lot more. So. Let's just go into the set Arnold's do what again. So we've got thick, we've got ribbon, um, and that just kind of gives us like, um, well, planes basically, just simple planes. And we've got um, oriented, which I think doesn't do a lot for me, um, and thick, go back to thick again. So set strand shape is going to give us our size, and then we've got. Um, the length is in create strands along normals. So again, we can bring that down to about 0.2 there and we get like these little pips. And it's pretty fast, really fast actually. Um, obviously if we up our mesh resolution, we're gonna get a lot more strands going on. So what we could do now, let's just stop that rendering for a second. This is what it looks like in the viewport by the way. It's a nice simple kind of feedback. Um, what we could do now is we could grab these three guys. And I'll just shift select all these three. And I'm going to go create compound. So now it's nice and simple. We've got a compound here. So what I could do is I could perhaps, I don't know, I could create a torus in here. And next time I come in, all I've got to do is bring that in there and just plug that into the compound. And I get the same thing arriving on my torus, which is really nice. Um, and the cool thing about it is if I go into my torus, shape settings, um, and I just turn up the sub divs to like 60 or something, then I get um, these strands wrapping around this new uh, divisions, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously we can undo that compound 
um, or go into it um, like so then we can go in and start playing around these strands inside it again and then just come back up a level keeping that compound nice and tidy um, so we just go in here play around a bit do what we want and then just come back up a level and that's kind of how it works and then we can just keep plugging in lots of different um, attributes and obviously we can save this compound off by creating by publishing it so we can publish the compound so publish compound and then we can create the path that we want and then it should just turn up uh, where we want it so compound namespace compound name we can call this strands strand um, strand thingy yeah and publish it so that's our compound published so by my way of thinking let's just stop this rendering I could go into Windows Bifrost browser um, I should put it in a certain place uh, sand cloth and yeah don't turn up there at all actually why doesn't it turn up in my Bifrost browser? Let's have a look at that again. So we go create, publish, publish graph is what I should have done. Actually, Bifrost graph, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just publish that like that. So we go fire smoke near and where. Maybe I have to like switch off my and restart it again and then you come in here. Bifrost browser. Plus, no, no, no. You know what, guys? I did this earlier, and it really wasn't any problem at all. So, let's publish the compound again. User compounds. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. So, compounds. If you publish a compound, you just go into here and go user compounds strand thingy. Right, of course, there we go. That's what I was doing earlier. Right, so strand thingy, and then it comes in. We've got our strand thingy as our compound. So I could just drag that, get rid of that, get rid of that, plug that in there, put that in there, and then it comes back again. So we can delete that. Okay, that's a published compound. So now when you hit tab, user, compound, strand thingy. Okay, that's how it works. Um, that's really really handy um, and what we could do really is just grab this whole thing now and just go create and now we want to publish to graph graph name strand thingy uh, graph namespace not going to touch that browser category cloth fire volumes right okay so we can create our own category I hope um, let's just call that madness. Uh, thumbnail we could put in there. Mm, not gonna bother. Uh, documentation, example, scene. Um, my scene file that uses this graph. Oh yeah, we could browse to the my guy scene. What did I even call this? Strands shoot. Look at all these lovely tutorials I do for you guys. Strands shoot. There you go. Strands shoot. That's example scene. Included connected materials as well. Phil, la 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 la. Author, me. Description, help. Um, okay, but I can't publish it. Illegal compound name. Underscore. Always a winner. Right, so now. Let's kill this graph, delete everything. Yay! Now I'm just going to go into Windows, Bifrost Browser. Ha ha ha, look at that. Look at that. Madness. Strange thing. Import. Look at that. So there you go. That is how to create strand thingies, um, compounds, so they show up when you hit tab. And indeed um, also publish a graph so that it shows up in your Biofrost browser. Albeit I took the long way around to show you that, but there you go. All right guys, take it easy. Much love, like, subscribe, all the stuff that all the other YouTubers ask you to do. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.